gender, and sexuality are gifts of God, and the United Church welcomes people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. As a church, we envision a future where everyone belongs. I'm talking to Michael Blair, the General Secretary of the United Church of Canada, about how mission and service embraces people of all sexual orientations. Michael, it's really good to be with you. It's good to be with you, Alexa. You mentioned how um, an individual who's trans may face issues like poverty, housing at higher rates than someone who, who doesn't identify that way. And we, we often use that term of intersectionality or intersection to describe the way in which one issue like uh, sexual and gender minority interacts with other issues. I wonder if you might actually draw some of the major intersectioning issues uh, for us. So um, one of the major ones, is, one of the major one is race. Um, that uh, people of color, people of African descent, uh, people um, who are not Euro <laughs> uh, in background face enormous challenges. So on top of the issue of sexual identity, there's the, their, their skin tone, which also cares in, in our particular context, a lot of systemic uh, oppression and and that impacts um, people's lives, people's experience, people's ability to kind of get the service they want to be valued in the way way they get that. So I think I think that's that's one of the uh, intersectional piece. Yeah. I think um, the larger piece around gender identity is also one of those uh, intersectional intersectional pieces around. Um, you know, we're still, even in this context, with all the, the work we've done, both kind of in the society and within the context of churches, we're still at a place where women uh, experience um, all kinds of microaggressions, violence, it mm -hmm. comes in terms of pace, scales, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Leadership, so that's that's uh, I think another uh, intersectional point. I think uh, one that doesn't get uh, um, lifted up is the kind of religion intersection. That in fact um, I find uh, there are so many people who are part of the sexual minority community who um, have uh, are are been shaped in a religious tradition. And for many of them, their religious tradition don't have a place for them. They're excluded. And that brings another uh, whole challenge because uh, their experience of God, is, um, as they, they know that, their need for community and support is such a significant part of their lives, and yet they're shut out of that because of uh, religious communities who are intolerant of their identity. And in some ways, you can be part of that community as long as you're not prepared to be open and out and be your authentic self. And I think that's another challenge to, to some of these intersectionalities that, that influence and impact um, uh, communities and individuals. Some of this is my own lived experience. So, you know, I, I'm a gay man. I come out of a, a fairly evangelical tradition. I was nurtured in, a, in an evangelical tradition. I served uh, within the context of that um, evangelical tradition. Um, and it was a tradition that couldn't accept me for who I am. As long as I stayed hid in hiding, about my identity, it was fine. The moment I made my identity clearer, um, I was somehow no longer part of that. So I think that's a, a part of the journey for me is my own journey and recognizing how important it is to create um, spaces of welcome, sp spaces for healing but also spaces for liberation, because I think one of the gifts, uh, especially within the context of the United Church, was that it, it, 
it allowed the opportunity to read scripture in a very liberative way. You know, and I've often said that um, this, the Bible, which in some ways we all, no matter what tradition we are, understand to be about liberation, mm -hmm. gets used as a way of really um, oppression. So the liberation of text that allows people to, to kind of be their full sense. But I think one of the, one of the things that has happened for me in working within the context of the United Church and uh, due to, I think, the generosity of folks across the church who have contributed to the, to the Mission and Service Fund, I've been able to travel to um, visit partners, um, whether through United Church, United Church Partner Connections, through my um, involvement with the World Council of Churches, and to hear and see the lived stories of uh, sexual minorities. Um, and that just, there's a part of me that says, for their liberation, <laughs> I need to stay in this work and need to be intentional about how we engage this work because that's a, a critical part uh, of yeah. my life and, and the life of some of the folks I come in contact with. What have you heard from those partners um, when, when they see you, the first openly gay general secretary of a major denomination? Um, have you heard what that means or how that impacts or how that shifts um, for people who are seeking liberation um, in very real <clears throat> life and death kind of ways. So I, I think, you know, I have a community <laughs> of folks from across the, the globe who um, kind of stay in touch with me and, and connection. But I think in some ways what it does, it, it, it gives hope and um, I think even the, in, the, in the context of the United Church, I know that there's a sense in which we, we take it for granted. So uh, there's a sense, well, the reality is that, you know, I'm the first black, openly gay uh, general secretary in the history of the church. Mm -hmm. And um, that's an important piece, right? Um, and it's important for me to, to name that because it, it won for people in the uh, Afro-descendant community. It gives a sense of hope uh, for people who are um, in the um, gay community in particular, um, who kind of feel that there's no place for them in the life of the church. Well, I add my, my great thanks to God for the ways in which the church has moved and the call that you heard and answered, so. Great. Good to be with you. Thanks for this. Your gift for mission and service will help create spaces of welcome for healing, learning, and liberation.